Now the purpose of tempo mapping is to line up all these grid lines with the music we record or import into Reaper. I have a project set up here with some drums, bass, instruments, and a vocal. Let's hear what it sounds like now. And I was told it wasn't recorded to a click. So we want a tempo map to put all the music in line, or I should say our ruler in line with the music. We don't want to actually change the music. So I could tell the song is in 6-8. So I'll start off by changing the time signature to 6-8. And we can see that doesn't change anything. It just changes the ruler up here. The music stays the same. But we also need to change a project setting. If we go up here to the file menu and choose project settings, right over here on the time base for items, we need to change this from beat, position, length, and rate to just time. If we don't do that and we create a tempo map, it's gonna stretch our audio, which we don't wanna do. Again, we don't wanna change our audio at all. We just wanna move our grid lines or the bars and beats to fit the music. So we'll hit OK. Then we're going to group all the items in the project so we can move them around together. Select all, type G to group them. And now if I move my items, everything moves in the project together. Then I'm going to zoom in so I can place this right in the bar. I'm pretty sure the second beat is a downbeat. So I'm going to put that at bar two, although we could put it on any bar we want. Let's turn on the grid and snapping, holding the shift key so we can move the items without it snapping and make it so the second hit of our drums is right on bar two. Again, you can use any bar you want, but obviously we can't use bar one. So this point is correct. Then I'm gonna add a tempo marker at bar two, put our cursor here, type shift C, and you had a tempo marker right here. Don't worry about the tempo right now as we'll change it manually. Just hit OK. And then we'll set up another tempo marker later on. Let's just count it. Right here should be bar three. So put our cursor on bar three, hit Shift C to create another tempo marker. And again, we won't change the tempo now. We'll do it manually. Hit OK. And then we're going to move this. Now, if we move the tempo marker, it just moves that marker. Instead, if we hold on control on the PC, command on the Mac, it's gonna move our grid lines with it, but just the ones to the right. Zoom out, we can see all the grid lines to the right move while this one stays locked. I'm gonna put this right on this beat right here, like that. So now from bar two to bar three should be correct. And we could hear that if we turn on our metronome. This bar is correct, but the bar before is 120 beats per minute, so that tempo is gonna be wrong. So to fix that, let's type in the same tempo as over here. Let's make it about 80, double click it, type in 80, which moves the others but at least it starts at the right tempo or close. Now we can move this back to the same place. Hold on the shift key and move it so the second hit is right on that same spot. And now these first two bars should be correct. And they are. Then it jumps again. So let's type in by double clicking. Again, about 80 beats per minute, which again should be close. Notice it starts to go off, but it's pretty close to the correct tempo. So now 
we can put another tempo marker at bar seven. Let's do this a bit easier by changing a mouse modifier. Instead of hitting shift C each time, let's go to our preferences, control P on the PC, command comma on the Mac. Let's scroll down under editing behavior to mouse modifiers. And we'll go into the context for ruler and left click. And we can see there's a few options left blank or we can just rewrite the one we want. I'm gonna use control on the PC or command on the Mac right here, as I don't really use this one that often. So I'm gonna double click it, go to action list and change it to insert a tempo marker. And instead of choosing this one, which goes with shift C, I'm gonna choose this one, which does the same thing, but without opening up the dialog. As again, we don't need it because we can move it manually. Double click this, it adds it here. And now we could hold down that modifier and just click in our ruler. Go to bar seven and it adds a tempo marker right there. Let's zoom in, get it closer, hold control on the PC, command on the Mac, and wind this up with the downbeat of this bar. So now it should be pretty good for these four bars. And it starts to fall off around here. So we add a tempo marker right here. Zoom in, hold on control, put it right here. Do the same thing every four bars. Move it right to the transient, zoom out. Now, if you want to get this more precise, as it should be good enough for most things, maybe adding some MIDI to your tracks or just seeing where the bar lines line up. But if we want to get more precise, we could put it on every bar. Just add them manually using the mouse modifier. Let's go to bar 15. And then we could use this action to do it a lot quicker. Put our cursor here, go to the actions, show action list, and type into the filter. Move cursor, tempo. And that's going to move the cursor right over here to the next tempo or time signature change. Let's right click over here. Make sure we turn off close after action on double click or enter. And we could put this down here. And we could double click this, zoom in a bit closer to move forward one tempo marker at a time. So you can fine tune all those changes we made. Double click it, goes to this one, which we already changed. And this one is a bit off, but we don't want to adjust it using control on the PC, command on the Mac, because that's going to adjust it from this marker going forward like this, which puts the rest off. Because we already set up a tempo marker correctly every four bars, we should use a different modifier. Alt control on the PC, option command on the Mac, and it's just going to move that marker by itself. It doesn't move this one or this one when we do it. So now we can zoom in really close and adjust each marker one at a time, holding down that modifier, double clicking to move through our song. So each one lines up perfectly or better. Make this one earlier, this one a bit later, holding down those two modifiers a bit earlier. And it takes a bit of time to do the whole song. When we're done, it should be perfect. And we just did it to bar 15. As obviously, we can just continue through the whole song. But this section should be perfect, at least based on one bar at a time. i
the tempo of our song, and the rulers or the grid is perfectly lined up with the song that was recorded. And again, it wasn't recorded to a click, but if you want to add MIDI or loops or anything programmed, or just line the song up by the bars and beats, this is the quickest and most accurate way to do it. So that's pretty much it. That's tempo mapping in Reaper. Hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go. Oh!